So when I was a little kid, I didn't like chili. Not at all. No kinds of chili. But my parents, they loved chili. So we would have chili for dinner. Now, my parents were those kind of parents, kids, maybe you have this kind of parent as well, that made sure we could not be excused from the table until we ate everything on our plates. Now, most of the time, this wasn't a problem. I liked what my mom made, I was a good eater, but not on chilly nights. So there I would sit, all alone at the table after everyone else had finished, just me and that big flat bowl of nasty cooling chili staring up at me. What to do? Well, one day I had it all figured out. When my mom wasn't looking, I decided to hide the chili. Children take note. That's right, I sneakily took spoonfuls of chili and stuffed it under the rib, rim of the bowl. Brilliant, right? Soon my bowl was empty, and to ensure that mom would never find the chili, I placed my napkin on top of the chili. I thought I was especially wise. I was soon excused from the table and was free. It wasn't until years later when that memory came to me and it occurred to me, oh yeah, mom probably found that chili, didn't she? And it would take many more years of life to realize that most things we try to hide in life are not as hidden as we would like to think. Amen? Sadly, I think it's a lesson our society and our government is yet to learn. Double amen? amen. This is Memorial Day weekend, a holiday designated to honor and remember those who were killed serving in the U.S. military. Now, like many of us, or maybe even most of us, someone I am related to served in the U.S. military and took part in a war. In my case, it was both of my grandfathers, and the war was World War II. And for one of my grandfathers, who was a military man, that extended into the Korean War as well. And I have to say, as we enter this conversation about Memorial Day today, I do so with some trepidation. I do not want to offend those that make the choice to serve our country and want to honor those that were killed in the line of duty. And I must also confess that I am a pacifist and embrace Gandhi's views of ahimsa and nonviolence. I personally do not believe the answer, that war is the answer to any of the problems of the world, and I do not believe that weapons that can so quickly take a life should be part of our society at all. That said, I do believe in one and want what seems to be at odds with the reality. What I believe and what I want seems to be at reality, re odds with the reality of what's on the ground. And, and I do acknowledge that war and guns and violent death at the hands of those two things has occurred. And I have to concede that it seems that some wars, in particular, I'm thinking of World War II, need it to happen to stop the Nazi empire and to save lives. So I feel torn, as I'm sure many of you do, too, as well, about war. And yet I still struggle with holidays such as Memorial Day as I ask the question, so, okay, what is the criteria for having died while being of service to the country? Almost 80 years after World War II in a pandemic-ridden country at war with itself, I wonder if it's time for us to revisit the definitions of war and memorializing. Now, fortunately, both of my grandfathers returned from the wars they served with no obvious physical impairments. But despite that, I did not get to know either of them personally. That my one grandfather became an alcoholic and died in a car accident under the influence, or that my other grandfather never returned to his hometown to discover that he had conceived a child, or that there was a child conceived during the war, may or may not have to do with their war experiences while serving. And yet to think that they came home and simply picked up their lives unscathed, as we know, is likely unlikely. According to one study, the rate of major depression among soldiers is five times higher than civilians. 
and the rate of PTSD is nearly 15 times higher. 20% of service members returning from Iraq and Afghanistan reported experiencing a probable traumatic brain injury resulting in shifts in behavior. A 2019 data cited by a nonprofit organization called Blue Star Families showed that incidents of spousal abuse in the military, or military were more than double that of the national population. And in recent years, multiple studies have shown that domestic violent rate, violence rates are higher among military members, with cultural spillover theory being given as the probable reason. This theory suggests that cultures that hold higher levels of aggression as normal will experience more spillover of that aggression in areas where it doesn't belong. Before 9-11, the Army received roughly 35 to 50 cases of domestic abuse a month. By 2005, they were fielding approximately 143 cases a week, a 12-fold increase. The Pentagon reported that there was also a demonstrable escalation in the severity of violence between 2001 and 2005. Service in the military also heightens the risk of violence to oneself. In 2019, the VA released its National Veteran Suicide Prevention Annual Report, which stated that the suicide rate for veterans was one and a half times the rate of non-veterans. In 2021, research found that 30,177 active duty personnel so get that number, 30,177 active duty personnel and veterans who served in the military after 9-11 have died by suicide. That's compared to 7,057 service members killed in combat during those same 20 years. Clearly, there are more who have lost their lives in service to the military than just those on the battlefield or those who died while in service or who the, were the ones that wore the uniforms. We are only now beginning to understand the downstream effects of PTSD on children of military personnel and veterans. As I've been thinking about this topic of war and memorials this week, I decided to educate myself a little bit about the number of wars the US has engaged in. My Google search was eye-opening. Did you know that there were 30 wars between the Revolutionary War and the Civil War? Now, the majority of these were short, with the sole purpose to take over land already occupied by a different nation of people on this continent. Does that sound familiar? a war to take over a different nation. One nation trying to intrude on another nation's land, going in with strong weaponry and destroying life and property. Had social media been around in the 1800s, what do you think would be blowing up on Twitter as the slaughter of innocent life was taking place? In our outrage at Russia, perhaps we must also admit that that they are simply taking a page from a playbook that the United States has written a long time ago. And after the Civil War, there were another 25 wars prior to 1900. In the 1900s, the U U and then in the 1900s, the US engaged in another 30 wars, invasions, and occupations. Thus far in the 21st century, there have been 11 wars and interventions. How do we begin to count the casualties of so much violence? Memorial Day and its parades and flag waving were designed to allow us to feel good about this country, our place in the world, and to honor those that have sacrificed in the name of the freedom we say we fight for. But perhaps it is time to recognize that the body count is so much higher than any parade can honor. War is not just what can be seen on the plate. These official conflicts are only a fraction of what is happening right now. I hear people talking about the possibility of a civil war in this country, and I feel that ship is already sailing, my friends. And these last few years and this past Tuesday is now what war in this country looks like. We are at war with ourselves, perhaps not for the first time, but with stakes and weapons that continue to escalate. 
Our war is hidden in the homes where untreated mental illness and a culture of violence have become the norm. Our war is hidden behind our too busy to notice lives where gun lobbyists control the government and white supremacy storms the capital and where wealth disparities push one of the wealthiest countries in the world to allow one in six of our children to live in poverty. We're the second largest country in the world and one in six of our children live in poverty. If that's not a war, our war is hidden in the closed doors of women's homes where they grapple with how to safely end an unwanted pregnancy while AR-15 carrying pro-lifers stand outside their doors insisting this choice is not theirs to decide. Our war is hidden under the guise of good for children laws enforced to punish a, chi punish a child for talking about their two dads or where the relationship of their two moms is not affirmed in the books they see or the stories they are told in school. Our war is played out at the deadly end of a police officer's knee, in the street running while black, or simply going to Walmart in not white enough skin. And sadly, our war is being played out in full, full view by our children who are the real victims and heroes of our country's story. Angela Rose Gomez, the mother of a second grader and a third grader at Robb Elementary, was a hero in the war she had not intended to fight this week. When she heard of the shooting at her children's school, she drove 40 miles to join numerous other parents begging and yelling at the officers to enter the school and stop the active shooter. After a few minutes, she was placed in handcuffs The officer stated that she was under arrest for intervening in an active investigation. Gomez recognized a few local Uvalde police officers and convinced them to tell the marshals to remove the cuffs. Once freed, she distanced herself from the crowd, jumped the school fence, ran inside the school building, and grabbed her two children. The three sprinted out of the school together while the shooter was still in the building. Hers is not the only story of heroism we all heard this week as news came out about the events on Tuesday. Gomez says that she saw police tackle a father to the ground and pepper spray another trying to restrain them from entering the building to save their children. Make no mistake, there is a war going on in America and sadly 19 little children were caught on the battlefield this week. From Sandy Hook to Parkland to Robb Elementary, and in the 87 schools since 2013 across America that have had school shootings, our children have been thrust into a war zone. Weapons designed for adult combat are the weapon of choice for the enemy combatants who enter our schools while the NRA seeks to arm teachers with guns so they can fight back. Give me a break. There's so many things wrong with that thinking, I don't even know where to begin. Two sets of people armed faced off at each other. I call that war. Why are we staging wars in our children's schools? Whose idea is that? By the way, the US is number one. We're number one. We're number one on the list of school shootings. Our number is 87. There have been 87 school shootings, like I said, since 2013. On that same list, in the last eight years, so let me repeat that, our 87 school shootings in the list over the last eight years is four times higher than the total number of the school shootings in the next 30 countries on the list combined. The number two on the list next to America was Mexico with eight. Most other countries had one or two in that eight year period, most which did not include casualties. And so I ask us, is this the world we want to live in? This is the weekend when we are to put up flags to honor those fallen in wars, so let's do that. But let's also be clear about who we're honoring this weekend. Sadly, the American flag has also been co-opted as a political statement for the far right, a symbol that declares America first values as the only way to be patriotic. 
I'll never forget one particular person who drove by Emerson when we were out doing our Black Lives Matter demonstrations in front of the congregation that we did for weeks after the murder of George Floyd. On that day, we decided to stand on the sidewalk with our Black Lives Matter banner, rainbow flag, and American flag. As this particular person came speeding by, they first caught sight of our American flag, and he excitedly honked the horn and began giving us a thumbs up. But then he did a double take as he realized that we also had a Black Lives Matter banner displayed next to the flag. He truly looked confused, and his thumb up turned into another one of his digits raising high towards us. This Memorial Day, let's not stop at honoring those lost while serving in the military, but let us honor all the deaths of war in all the wars, those listed on Google and the many that have attempted to be hidden. We need to let Cobb County know what we at Emerson stand for and that we will keep proclaiming our values over and over and over that we sh will show up to school board meetings, that we will show up every opportunity we can get, that we will show up at the polls, that we will vote. We must raise a flag that in no uncertain terms says unless we find our way to peace, peace will not come for any of us. And we are a faith of action, my friends, and so here is my invitation to you right now. Outside the sanctuary are yard signs, and in a moment I'm going to invite you to go and write a message of love for this weekend, a memorializing. Now, I have to say, I didn't think of this until it was too late to get big signs, and the only signs I could get were small. So, <laughs> there were 36 of them, but we taped some of them together. There's also some other poster board out there, but I think there's enough for everybody if you pair up to participate and have a sign of some sort. There's also some signs that already have things written on them that you're welcome to use. Once you've made your sign, I'm going to invite us all to go out to our sidewalk and stand in demonstration for 10 minutes so that we can proclaim our values together. James is going to be bringing his, not his trumpet, his trombone, to accompany us uh, while we're standing out there. So once we all get out there, we'll have about 10 minutes together to stand and proclaim our values. And then um, the signs, a lot of the signs come with those yard sign little things. So we're going to go ahead and leave our yard signs out there as our memorial for the weekend. Mahatma Gandhi once said, I object to violence because when it appears to do good, the good is only temporary. The evil it does is permanent. So let us begin once again to declare peace and love as the center of this faith.